by. And then now I'm going to tie the hand brush. Okay, the Bibio, that's good. Put that there. Put in my next hook. Again, the same kind of hook. I already have my barbs um, pressed down. And the whole thing about barbs being pressed down, the one for the hook itself, um, these are pressed down so that you don't tear up the thread. But the one on the hook itself, if you're catching and releasing, if you're just fishing for fun and not actually trying to catch fish to eat, it makes the hook easier to get out of the fish's mouth without without stressing them out too much. Um, so I hope this, I don't even know how long I've been going, but this video, I hope it's not too long. I've been trying to tie and make shorter videos because people don't like to sit and watch a person tie a fly for 30 minutes, generally. Even if it's two flies. Okay, so I'm using the same thread here. Um, and it's very similar as far as what you tie in. Just trying to get a little more coverage here so things have something to stick to. So I uh, have a new piece of wire. I'm going to use wire. This wire is probably not going to be as visible as the other one. Um, but because it doesn't have the contrast but it's going to serve the same purpose to protect protect that hackle. Just want to get a good coverage here. I'm going to tie that one a little close to the head there, but that's okay. Or the eye of the hook. All right, so I'm going to get this down to the end. Okay, got that in there. Now this one uses uh, kind of a reddish hackle. I'm going to tie that in the same way I tied the other one um, so that it goes bigger as it goes forward. And this one was kind of different because I was trying to figure out which feather I wanted. I have some other hackles that are similar in color um, and trying to compare the ones that they tied with and these are uh, this is a little bit darker feather than the other one I thought I would like the other one better and then I looked at it more closely against the the green thread that this uses and it just didn't look quite right so I went with this one instead of the other one all right so let me um, now I'm going to tie in the green thread uh, so I don't I didn't have any of any kind of tying thread this color. So I pulled this off of a piece of um, paracord. It's this bright green. And it's a good color for a St. Patrick's Day fly. Uh, so I'm just going to take this and wrap it around the thread here and just go up and it pulls it in place. Like this. So I'll do that and just put a few wraps around it. Oh, come on, heck, on, get out the way. You see my thread, I keep hitting the tip of the hook with that. That can be bad if it's a super sharp hook because it can just cut your thread and it'll snap. This, it's crazy, this thread is really super tough, but it also breaks super easy. Kind of a... In fact, when I was first learning how to tie flies, I watched a video and one of the first things the guy showed whenever you're learning how to tie, he said to get a hook and just tie the thread on and just tie it and practice pulling until it breaks and then you'll know how hard you can pull it before it breaks all right so this thread I'm gonna put some wax on this thread because this stuff is very slick um, I actually tried to tie a fly with only paracord one time 
only this kind of paracord and this stuff after it was done, the fly came apart because it was just so slick. So I'll put some wax on here to make it more sticky. You see it makes the thread a little stiff. So that'll help it stick to the fly. And I think I'm also going to do something else to help it. Put a little bit of, although maybe I shouldn't have done that in the wax, put a little bit of fingernail polish down so that when it gets mixed into the fibers, it'll stick better. All right, so I'm just gonna take this and wrap it. And try to avoid the tip of the hook there. And I want to give myself some room here at the head. In fact, let me go ahead and bring this up a little bit. Because I've got to tie in some deer hair at the top of this thing. See, it's kind of the same color as the background on here, but that's all right. Get a couple more turns here, although I don't need them. I think I have a tendency to use too much thread when I do things. The pros that tie these things tell you that you only need a couple of turns, like two or three turns to make it happen. All right, so I'm gonna take this hackle now. And I'm gonna wrap forward like I did on the other one. Now I've got plenty to work with here and this one needs to be a little bit bushier, so I'm gonna take several turns. almost feel like I should have used two hackles on this one because it doesn't look thick enough compared to the standard I'm going off of. So I'll take a couple of last turns in one spot here, make the head a little bit thicker. I'll tie this off. Get this all right and this is called the hand brush um, I think mainly because of the deer hair that goes on it because it makes it really look bushy um, I don't know what the significance of the green is for it being a hand brush but uh, I'm glad that it's green it's the reason I chose it to tie on this video all right so now I've got my hackle tied in. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other one. I'm going to go backwards here. I'm going to put a, two or three turns, well, maybe six or seven turns, here at the butt. You see it just makes a little bit of more segment right there. and makes it a little shinier. I'm sorry about the light being weird when my hand goes by. Let's see if I can change that. No, the lighting keeps switching around. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other, with the Bibio. I'm going to wiggle through the hackle and try to get it to move out of the way. Like that. Some of them are still going to get pressed down. And you can use a needle and pick them out. But not too concerned about it if they get stuck. I have to tie some more of these. It's a good looking fly. 
even if we just did that right there and left it alone, that would be good for fishing with. But the deer here is going to give it a kind of a wing. Giving this pretty good tension here, just to make sure that wire lays down. I'm gonna lay it over that, like I did on the Bibio, and take a few, a few turns, and try to keep these hackles from getting stuck in the thread. Snip them off before they get all unruly. And lay this back. I don't want to build up too big on this before I tie in the deer hair. So I'll leave it right there. Find. Did I already break it off? Oh, there it is. I thought that it snapped. Okay. All right. So there's the. The wire in. Pretty cool looking. Lay that back some. Now, I can't remember. I think that they cut some of this, but this is too thin to cut. So I'm just going to make it lay down on the top like that. Now I'm going to take my deer. I got some a piece of one of my deer um, capes, and I've got on this piece. I've got a lot of white, and I've got this that's got a little bit of brown to it. I'm going to make that. I'm going to use that stuff right there. So it's got some brown laying on top. Just gonna get a little tuft of it like that. I don't want too much, but I don't want too little. I'll get down in there. Um, the guy that I saw do this. He made his flies really rough. They didn't have a lot of, they didn't put them in the hair stacker. So the ends were all different lengths like that. And he just tied it in. And I don't want to make this, uh, I don't want to have too much of a stump here. So I'm going to take some of this off. The messy part of fly tying. When you trim deer hair and it pops everywhere. So I'm just going to lay this on. I want it to be about the length of the whole hook. And then this is going to bulk up in a big way. So I go around the hair two or three times. I give a little bit of tension, but not too much until I get it wrapped a few good times. And then very carefully I pull it. I don't want to break that thread. Like that. I'm sure there's different ways that people do that part. Um, whether they tie it down and get it out of the way or cut it off or make it really buggy. The guy that I watched made it really buggy. So I'm gonna make it buggy like him. And then I'm just gonna go under and bulk out that head some more. Nice bulky head. Like that. I'm gonna trim off that piece of hackle that popped out. I'm going to get my half hitch in there. I'm going to real quick show you the half hitch with my other hand. If I can find that pin. So, I'm going to take a couple more turns.
ends and real quick show you this half hitch so so I'm gonna do it with the other hand I'm gonna go here I'm gonna use this pin I'm gonna take a turn around the pin like that I'm gonna put the pin head over the eye of the hook I'm used to doing that with smaller hooks but still you get the idea that on a smaller hook that goes into the eye or over the eye and you slide it right off onto the hook so instead I use my finger like that oh, that didn't work either <laughs> like that and then once you get a good couple of half hitches and you can whip finish it you actually don't have to put a half hitch in there because the whip finish is just a bunch of half hitches. So the whip finisher just helps you smooth it over and secure it. Especially if you have a good whip finisher. I like this piece of junk I got. That's okay. It's better than not having one. Since I don't know how to do it with my hands. All right, so take that, and snip it off. A little bit of fingernail polish. I really need to get this fingernail polish set up with the needle instead of the brush, but because it makes it hard to get into these tight spaces. Turn this light down a touch. It's a little bit too bright. I'm going to get my other fly here. You can see them both. So, the Bibio and the hand brush. Let me turn that a little bit so you can see the green. There. There. The Bibio and the hand brush two flies that are popular in Ireland or at least according to that website that I went to um, tied for my nieces Megan and Rachel for their birthdays and also for St. Patrick's Day so happy St. Patrick's Day and have a great day be safe watch the quiet man and drink a green beer if you're of age of course Have a good one. I'm going to bed.